Good evening, sisters and brothers. Welcome to our evening prayer this evening. Friday evening, Friday the 30th of April. And I do want to say today is Good Friday in the Orthodox Church. And Sunday is their Easter. So all Eastern Orthodox Christians, uh, as you know, some of you know that um, in our family here in the rectory, we have some uh, Eastern Orthodox in our family. So for all Eastern Orthodox uh, Christians, happy Good Friday and happy Easter Holy Weekend uh, to you this this Friday, Holy Saturday tomorrow and Easter on Sunday. It's a special celebration of course in all churches. We had ours almost exactly, I think exactly a, week, a month ago. <laughs> so uh, the Eastern Church is only celebrating theirs this weekend. Anyway, let's come to the evening prayer and um, and pray and bring the end of this day to the Lord. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory and praise forever. From the deep waters of death, you brought your people to new birth by raising your Son to life in triumph. Through him, dark death has been destroyed and radiant life is everywhere restored. As you call us out of darkness into his marvelous light, may our lives reflect his glory and our lips repeat the endless song, blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. And our collect for this evening. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I um, just want to do a, a prayer tonight from... <clears throat> can find it one of the one of the prayers from the Orthodox Church and um, this is the prayer of Saint Dmitri of Rostov and one of the Russian Orthodox Christians as we think of the Orthodox Church's celebration of Easter this weekend here's the prayer come my light and illumine my darkness Come, my life, and revive me from death. Come, my physician, and heal my wounds. Come, flame of divine love, and burn up the thorns of my sins, kindling my heart with the flame of your love. Come, my king, sit upon the throne of my heart and reign there, for you alone are my king and my lord. Amen. It's from one of the... Russian Orthodox saints. Anyway, let's move on to our psalms, our psalm, our psalm this evening, Psalm 36. Psalm 36. <clears throat> psalm 36. I have a message from God in my heart concerning the sinfulness of the wicked. There is no fear of God before their eyes. In their own eyes they flatter themselves too much to detect or hate their sin. The words of their mouths are wicked and deceitful. They fail to act wisely or do good. 
Even on their beds they plot evil. They commit themselves to a sinful course and do not reject what is wrong. Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the highest mountains, your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, preserve both people and animals. How priceless is your unfailing love, O God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Continue your love to those who know you. Your righteousness to the upright in heart. May the foot of the proud not come against me nor the hand of the wicked drive me away. See how the evildoers lie fallen, thrown down, not able to rise. Mm. I love the first part, you know, Tim Keller calls it the anatomy of sin. And it's about looking at the, the, the depth of our sins. He says, he says here, fear in God is not mere belief in God. It is to be so filled with joyful awe before the magnificence of God that we tremble at the privilege of knowing, serving, and pleasing him. That's what it means to fear God. We tremble at the privilege of knowing, serving, and pleasing him. Sin shrugs at God. Its essence is failing to believe not that he exists, but that God matters. This attitude is deadly. Fear of God and self-understanding grow or diminish together. Indifference toward God is a form of self-deceit and self-deception. To feel no need for God is to be out of touch with reality. Such people have ceased to be wise. Verse 3. What starts as mere overconfidence can grow into dishonesty and cruelty. Sin is spiritual cancer. Sisters and brothers, let's remember that. Sin is spiritual cancer. It's a cancer of our souls that eats away at our life in God. And the more we remain in sin, the more it grows and eats away at our souls. And so the prayer, Lord, we confess the foolishness of our thought life, even when we are able to avoid overt thoughts of resentment fear and lust, our mind still does do not fix itself on the most worthy and beautiful things and on you. Get glory in my eyes, Lord, and incline my heart to yourself. Incline my heart to fear you. In Jesus' name, amen. And our, our New Testament reading is Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4 from verse 14 to 30. It's getting a bit colder, cold out here. <clears throat> it's after 6 o'clock, so. <laughs> I, should, I should come before the sun goes down. Even though it's more overcast than anything else. Okay, Luke chapter 4 and verse 30. Oh, sorry, verse 14 to 30. <laughs> Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him 
spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, the Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son? they asked. Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself, and you will tell me, Do here in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. <clears throat> Truly I tell you, Jesus continued, No prophet is accepted in his own, in his, in his hometown. I assure you, that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's day when the sky was shut for three and a half years and there was a, a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was, ne was not sent to any one of them but to a widow in Zarephath in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of the town, and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built, in order to throw him off the cliff. But he walked right through the, the crowd and went on his way. <clears throat> That's it for tonight. All right, so the, the, the Jesus comes from the wilderness in this temptation and he goes to his, his hometown of Nazareth and he enters the synagogue, which he does, which he would do on a Sabbath day as a faithful Jewish person. <clears throat> He's given the scroll of Isaiah to read. He opens it up and he read a portion of scripture that applies to the Messiah, the coming kingdom of God. And he rolled up the scroll and people are looking at him now because the, 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 the custom is you speak, you, you give a, a, a sermon on the subject that you've just read. As a, as a rabbi, you read the text and you preach on it. Very much similar to what we do today. In fact, the Christian sermon preaching comes directly from the synagogue where you read a text and explain it and expound the text. And so they, <clears throat> they're looking at Jesus. Are you going to explain it? And Jesus says, today the scripture is fulfilled. <laughs> In other words, you're looking at the explanation. <laughs> Isn't that audacious? You know, Jesus, he says, and brothers, you know, this is why I say, well, it's not me. C.S. Lewis says, you can't believe that this person is just a nice rabbi or a good prophet. Because nobody would make these claims who is a nice prophet. John the Baptist was a nice prophet. He never made claims like this. When people say to him, are you the Messiah? He says, no, I am just a voice crying out. Jesus read a text 
text that says the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, sent me to, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind, proclaim the free, the oppressed, and so on. The point is, sisters and brothers, that text is, up, is applicable to the Messiah. When the Messiah comes, he will be endowed with the Spirit of God and he will bring salvation and deliverance and freedom. And Jesus says, you're looking at him. <laughs> That's me. That's me. Today, right now, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And they, they took offense at this. And Jesus, you know, they, they, they heard this, but they didn't quite hear it, did they? And Jesus went on to explain to them that the reason that they don't get it is because of their unbelief. They are stiff neck and they're hard hearts. And he said, um, he says, you know, they said, um, isn't this Joseph's son? In other words, don't we know you? How can you even begin to say this scripture is for who who are you who the who who in the world are you that you are going to claim to be the messiah the one to come you are we know you <laughs> you're the you know you're the guy from down the street uh, you know we you we our children played together when you were you know when you were ch when you were a child we know you and jesus said you see this is a problem familiarity breeds contempt <laughs> This is the problem. You think you know me. You don't really know me. And the fact is, you don't realize that your unbelief and your hard hearts are keeping you away from the truth. And he gives them a nice little parable. In fact, the parable is profound because he said this. He said, in Elijah's day, there was a famine for three and a half years. And God wanted to preserve his prophet Elijah. So he sent him to a widow in Zarephath in the region of Sidon. In other words, outside of Israel. And, and Jesus' point is, why did God send him outside of Israel? Because in Israel, even though there were many widows there, there were not many widows of faith who are going to believe God like this woman who was a foreigner. And that is the point that Jesus is making. And the same point of Naaman. Naaman was a Syrian. There were many lepers in Israel, but none of them got cleansed except this foreigner. What's the point? Jesus is saying, sisters and brothers, that the gospel is going to move from you and it's going to foreigners. It's going to those on the outside, those you regard as dogs, those you look down on. Because you don't have the faith to believe. Sisters and brothers, that scripture, that scripture is fulfilled in the worldwide proclamation of the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ, this message of the kingdom moved away, as it were, from the center of Judaism into Gentile territory, the Roman world and so forth. And, and, and Jesus is saying the reason for that is because of the lack of faith of his own people. They, oh, I know you. Who are you? We are too, we're familiar with you. And Jesus is saying, you are too familiar with me, and yet you don't know me. Have you ever been in that situation, sisters and brothers, where you, you thought you know somebody? But you really don't. You, you've been with them. You you've play with them. You've been around them. But you don't really know them. And Jesus said, you don't really know me at all. And it's because of your lack of faith. While you're not going to see miracles among you. And you're not going to get the release that, this, that the Messiah is coming to bring. The freedom to the captives. The open of blind eyes and so on. You are not going to see that. Why? Because you don't believe. You don't believe I am who I am. And so the gospel is going to go to foreigners, those in Sidon, those in, in, in Syria and beyond. Because the people, the people of the book, the people of the gospel, the people whom the Messiah has come through have rejected him 
for something else. And so we, we as a, in fact, as, as we speak this tonight, there was, a, there was a situation in Israel where many Jews who were worshiping, who were celebrating a saint's day, got killed. Over 40 of them got killed last night. We need to pray for the Jews, sisters and brothers. Pray that their eyes be open. I, I know I'm praying for Muslims during this month of Ramadan, but you know, as I think about this tonight, we are to pray for the Jews. Because, you know, the Jews are the people who gave us the scriptures and gave us the Messiah. And, and yet they've turned their back on this same Messiah and the gospel. And so we need to pray for them as much as we are praying for Muslims. I pray for Muslims because of Ramadan mainly. Of course, we do that all the time. But let's pray for Jews as well and, 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 and pray for those who got hurt and whose lives were lost, especially in that recent situation um, yesterday, I think it was. So let's pray, let's pray. Our Father, we thank you that Jesus is the Messiah, the one who is to come to free us from the bonds of sin, to open our blind eyes, to declare the graciousness of God. And so Lord, give us faith to believe. We pray as we remember Jewish people who who reject the Messiah. Lord, we pray for them tonight. We pray for Jews everywhere, as we pray for Muslims everywhere. That the Jewish eyes, those they, they've given us the scriptures, they've given us the covenants, they've given us the patriarchs, as Paul says in Romans 11, they've given us the Messiah himself. And yet, they've turned their backs on all that, They've turned their backs on Jesus. And so, Lord, we pray for them. We pray for their conversion. We pray for their salvation tonight. And we remember, Lord, we pray that you'll remember the lives of those who were lost. Have mercy on them in Israel uh, uh, last night. So we pray for them, Lord. And we pray for their families as they mourn. Lord, as Paul says, they have a zeal for God, but that zeal is not based on knowledge. Just like Muslims, they have a zeal for God, but it is based on false teachings. And so, Lord, we pray that you will reveal yourself to Muslims, to Jews, that they will turn to Jesus, the Messiah, the one who fulfills all of scripture. And so, Lord, we pray for them tonight. We pray for those who are, who are harmed, who are hurt, who lost their lives, and who, whose families are mourning tonight in that, in that sit terrible situation in Israel. We pray for them, but we also pray for, for Jews everywhere, for their salvation, and Muslims as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, oh God, for our own community and we pray for those on our own prayer list tonight. We remember them. Remember Sebastian and Cornelia and, 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 and other, um, those who are celebrating uh, Orthodox Easter this weekend. We pray for them tonight. We pray, Lord, that they will experience um, um, the grace of God in their celebration of Good Friday and Holy Saturday and Easter on Sunday this week. We pray for them. Remember those, Lord, who are, uh, who are sick. Again, remember Avril and Liberty and Doreen and her mother and Dolly and Desmond. Remember these, your children. Remember Chester and Veronica. Uh, Lord, remember Thelma. And, and, and in your mercy, remember Jane, Lindsay and Sandra and Paul and Maxine. And Andy. Lord, remember these, your children, we pray in mercy. Grant them your grace of healing. Remember Tavern, Salima, and Selvi, Auntie Janie, Jean, Walter, Monica, Pauline, and others who might be in pain tonight. Lord, remember these, your children. Remember the people of, of, of India, especially as they battle this disease and Lord, 
give them hope, give them courage, give them faith, give them deliverance. We pray, Lord, not just for them, but so many other places in the world where COVID is, 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 is causing great grief and destruction in its path. Lord, we pray. We pray for the end of COVID all over the world. We thank you for what you're doing in this country. And we pray, Lord, that, that what, what is happening here, the, the numbers going down, the, 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 the lockdown is being lifted and, and the, 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 the sicknesses and deaths are going down. We pray for that all over the world. Lord, we pray in your mercy hear our prayer and our night prayer guide us waking O lord and guard us sleeping that awake we may watch with christ and asleep we may rest in peace into your hands O lord i commend my spirit for you alone O lord have redeemed me O god of truth keep us O lord as the apple of your eye hide us under the shadow of your wings Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you peace and rest tonight, sisters and brothers, in all that you do. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed night, one and all.